Little kid, no, I think. Yes, let's be serious. Tick tock, time to rock. Good mm-hmm. evening, good morning, good afternoon to everyone who's watching from all over the world. It's your friendly neighborhood philosopher here, D. Wood, with me now. AP. The Batman to my Robin. <laughs> yeah. Yo, how yeah. you doing, AP? Uh, good, good, good. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi Hey, did you, did you want to check out, did you want to try out your new sound effect machine? Or oh, yeah, yeah. Or was that I a wanted, secret? I wanted to do that. Yeah, no, it's, I, I have this new sound machine, this new soundboard where I play all kinds of wonderful things. I didn't really have much time to set it up yet, but uh, I put a bunch of sounds from the medical doctor in here, like this one. I'm a medical doctor. Like, now, we did have, we did have a, a technical issue when you just tried to do it right before we started. Um, uh-huh. and then you couldn't hear me after you did it. Do you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. It works now? Okay. Yeah, it works now. So you have the sound effects machine that you can just add regularly. Yeah, I have this, this, uh... What the hell? I mean... Does it hey, sound good? it's a Christian show, and you've got Sheikh Yasser oh. Qadi <laughs> and his foul mouth. <laughs> hey, you need to get that, uh... <laughs> Actually, I need to get one of those. I want the clip of uh, Yasser Qadi. David Wood is such a disgusting individual, blah, blah, where he goes on that long, like, two-minute rant, like, like yeah. a thesaurus. <laughs> it was awesome. Like, if you looked up evil in a thesaurus, it was like he just read it all. Uh, about yeah. Me. Noxious, uh, ultra crepidarian. <laughs> all uh, right, so. I, oh, good. Put the narrative has holes in it in there, too. I still need to do that. Yeah. All right, before we get started on our stuff today. We got uh, something going on tomorrow. You want to tell everyone what we got going on tomorrow oh, on your yeah. channel? You're talking to me, yes. Um, no, I'm talking to my Aunt Maple. Hey, Aunt Maple, what do we got? What, what's the live stream for tomorrow, Aunt Maple? Okay, go ahead. I'm talking to her when she's not even listening. <laughs> People are saying, you need to add a Sir White Meat sound. Sir White Meat. <laughs> all sorts of stuff. You can have all kinds of awesome stuff. Yeah, yeah. You're sick. You're sick. Um, yeah, no. Tomorrow we are going to have a live, <laughs> tomorrow night we're going to have a live stream uh, <laughs> with you, uh, Robert Spencer, and me, where we are going to um, respond to Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa, who made a video, who published a video just to explain for 15 minutes how much they are scared of Robert Spencer and Brother Rashid, and how. Uh, they feel very insecure to sit down and have an honest discussion about Islam with these two people. And we want to react to that tomorrow. Yeah, it's funny. So th- they were supposed to be, uh, it's the P, what are the initials? PBD, PBD podcast. Yeah. Uh, PBD podcast wanted to have, um, yeah, we'll talk about all this tomorrow, but they wanted to have, at first they wanted to have Robert Spencer and uh, a Jewish guy and Muhammad Hijab on a live stream and uh and then they tossed ali dawa into the mix and then they tossed brother rashid into the mix and all of a sudden uh muhammad hijab and ali dawa posted a video oh they're trying to set us up (laughs) and it's 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 so clear that they just they knew they were about to get schooled uh because with robert they would have said their their objection to robert would have been uh uh, but you don't know Arabic. You don't know Arabic. Ha ha. But Rashid would have destroyed them on the Arabic. So they knew yeah. that w- yeah, they knew that would have been a bad combination for them. And so they uh, they ran like cowards. <laughs> and so anyway, yeah. we're going to be talking about all that tomorrow. So today I wanted to go. I, I, a video popped up. It popped up a couple times. I finally clicked on it. But it's the uh, testimony video of some guy named Kareem. Not familiar with him, but the video has been getting tons of views. It had like 900,000 on the English YouTube channel. I think they said over a million on one of their other channels. I don't know what their other channels are. Uh, The channel's called One for Israel. I think it's a Christian channel because it's a bunch of Christian videos. But I wanted to go through this because you and I were talking uh, beforehand. Um, I've known plenty of people who uh, left Islam, converted to Christianity because of dreams about Jesus. And there, there have been people, uh, who had a jihadi background or a violent background or something like that, who left Islam and became Christians. But there are also fakes. There are also people who, um, I don't, 
I'm not think I'm not thinking of anyone who just like made up completely made up a story about uh, converting. There may be people like that, but I, I've seen a few people over the years who left uh, Islam, became Christian, and then massively embellished their stories. So I'm thinking here specifically of uh, Ergen Kainer, and I know one other that I was told about. I don't know who he is. I was just told by a Christian pastor, hey, if um, we had an issue with a guy that we had give a testimony, and later on we found out that some of the details were not true. And so with Ergen Kainer, it wasn't like they'll say, they'll, they'll call him uh, on the Muslim channels like fake ex-Muslim and so on. The, the issue wasn't that he was never a Muslim or anything like that. It's that he made up this story about his background and how he was coming to the U.S. as part of this youth jihad movement and so on. And then it turned out that it was not, uh, the facts were massively refuted. I mean, the, 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 his story was massively refuted by some facts that came out later. Which is weird. I heard, because, I heard about some other uh, Turkish guy, I think, who um, was kind of like revealed as a fake ex-Muslim because his background like didn't add up at all. Was his name Ridvan? Uh, I think something like that. I don't know, apostate brother. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, no, some other a, guy. He was a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> he was always a Jew. He's paid by Mossad to say he left <laughs> Islam. You see, today they are talking about Israel again. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, so I started watching this. Uh, I started watching this video um, about Kareem, and it, it's it's interesting because again, everything he's saying, I can think of examples where those things happen. But at the same time, if you were to make up a story, this is the kind of story you'd make up. So uh, we're going to go ahead and go through this, and if anyone knows any any details and so on, because I don't want, I basically don't want to, I don't want to share a bunch of stuff and pass a video around. Um, it's it's a weird situation because generally, I mean, generally I would trust someone until I have a reason not to trust them, and I don't have any reason not to trust this guy. But just just with the couple of instances I've seen in the past of people uh, embellishing stories and so on, makes me a little reluctant to what you know to share things without getting other people's uh, perspectives on them. And uh, yeah, so if we if we can expose AP. Or being a fake ex-Muslim, then yes, that's true. We can expose everybody. That's true. All right, that's so you true. ready to go through some of this? I am always ready. You should know this. All right, so let's yes. get Kareem up here. When I was a kid, my mom used to pray for me and say, "Kareem, may I see you a leader one day, coming with victory for Islam, or a leader." Who is coming back? Death. They even got the Allahu Akbar. But you see what I mean? Like right off the bat, like if you were to make up a story about your 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 violent past, how you're raised and so on, that's what you would do. And yet, I I mean, I've actually seen videos of indoctrinating young people like that, and uh, especially um, in certain areas where they where they're glad to raise kids specifically as jihadis and so on. Um, so, yeah, David right here immediately trying to discredit uh, somebody' personal story. Like, no, I am supposed to be the only Christian who is who converted and who is uh, <laughs> legitimate. No, it, it's this weird. It's this weird situation uh, where, like, <laughs> just a couple of examples ever of someone giving a fake story, and now like the radar goes on as soon as anyone's telling a story. When again, I have no re I have no reason not to not to trust this guy or or think that he's telling the truth. <laughs> so I just, I just want other people, other other, especially if anyone actually like knows him or has heard about him before or something like that and has any uh, any background. Um, yeah. I saw some people in the comment section say that um, one for Israel is a messianic Jewish channel. Oh yeah, that so. make that makes sense. That would make sense why they're called. Uh... Wait, what's yeah. this? Why is AP still running from debating Professor Dizzle? Is he scared that he'll get humiliated and have no other choice but to convert to Christianity? <laughs> no, <laughs> no one's no one's running. No one's running here. Uh, yeah. You're finished already. Look at me. Look at me. You know you're done. Powerful. <laughs> Powerful, powerful. Thank you. <laughs> Someone needs to snatch that machine for you before you start abusing it. All right, here we go. Back to Kareem. In the Quran, we grow up with two things. First, you should give your life to God. Second, uh -huh. you should defeat Jews and Christians. 
I memorized the Quran. I memorized the Sunnah books. L listen to how many. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm going to have to stop him. Every I'm stopping him. Notice, if he's a Muslim and goes to the mosque and so on, they probably would have had him memorize stuff. And he talks about memorizing. But I'm like, okay, now I have something that we could test him on if we, uh, if I ever run into him. You say, hey, you said you're a member. I, I, he doesn't necessarily have to mean that he memorized the entire Quran. He could mean that he memorized uh, parts of the Quran or something like that. But uh, <laughs> is that messed up? <laughs> Like, again, like maybe two or three examples that I'm ever familiar with. And now I'm like suspicious, like, ah. Yeah, yeah. Or you could just do it like Ali Dawa does. Uh, he, he invites people on and then he says, uh, recite the, the, the shortest surah from the Quran. And then if, when the other person says, no, I'm not doing it. then he's like, you see, fake ex-Muslim never practiced Islam, never knew anything. <laughs> Yet when when they'll introduce their uh, their converts from Christianity, this guy was a this guy was a what do they call them? Uh, yeah, he was a minister. He was a minister, and these guys have like have no idea about anything in the Bible. They have no clue. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I did all of the responsibilities a Muslim should be doing every day. My daily life was always built and centralized around Islam. Hey, little side note. Do, do you know where, uh, where's Farid from? I, I've never been able to tell if Farid actually has an accent or if he just speaks in a really condescending voice, but this guy kind of reminds me of the cadence of Farid. Farid is from um, Bahrain, I think, which is oh, a okay. very tiny country in the, on the, in the Arabian Peninsula. Does he, he have an, does he have an accent or is that just his condescending voice? He does have an accent. Um, and I, I'm not sure how his English developed. If he like, uh, if he lived somewhere else for a while, or how, how, whatever, how, whatever is uh, whatever the background is. But he does live in Bahrain, and he is from there. So um, okay, it, oh, okay, it, it's a little bit weird. But but that said, it's not just the accent. I would say. I mean, you can listen to lots of other people who also have um, you know Arab backgrounds and Arabic um, accents, but. They don't necessarily sound, you know, like like this. That's what I mean. I, I normally wouldn't want to make fun of someone for having an accent or something like that. But so when I talk like this and I'm imitating Fareed, I always thought he just talks like this to the infidel, like this condescending. You're all inferior to me because I'm on the hawk and I got the hikmah. You know what I mean? Oh, he always, you know, he's like, I am I know everything. And told people they don't know anything at all. Yeah, that's why I talk like this. <laughs> to me, Fareed's accent sounds like a posh Scottish person. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, I can't figure out what it is. I can't figure out what that. What yeah, that can is. you do a Scottish accent? Huh? Scottish? Yeah. If it's not, no, just uh, like from Braveheart or something like that. And then there was Mike Myers on uh, SNL. If it's not Scottish, it's crap. That sort of thing. <laughs> They may take our lives, but they'll never take our freedom. I'd have to practice. I have never, I haven't practiced the Scottish accent. I could get it. I could crush it though. All right, ready? There was, there was a, there was a show with old people that I used to watch. Uh, I used to watch saying I only watched a few episodes. It was very, it was very terrible. It was a Scottish show. That's the only thing I know. <laughs> Beanie Baby here. This is before your time, but uh, Steve Martin and Dan Aykroyd on SNL used to do this, uh, these characters where... Uh, <laughs> We are two wild and crazy guys. That's that's right. It actually they do. Uh, Fareed does kind of sound like that. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see, uh, John H here said, uh, if the Jews can get fun actors as AP and the Dizzle, then I'm all in. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, fun actors as AP. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. Why well, you keep interrupting this guy? I don't know. I was dreaming of that day until I got this fantastic opportunity when the Americans attacked Iraq. 2002, 2003, this was a big fight. Oh, and I said to myself, this is the moment where I will give my life to God. I was dreaming with this phone call that would come to me and this man who will help me to let me go and fight the infidels. So he's a, he's apparently on some list of people that you would call to go do a a terrorist attack, and he's saying he's waiting for the call. Does that sound right? I guess so. I don't know. Like. I, I don't exactly know, but um, I don't know. He does have kind of a strange uh, vibe, or well, I don't know how else to put it, but uh, very very dramatic and. 
especially with all the background music blasting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Like machine gun fire in the background and so on. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> and this call has come. And in that day, so the, the man call. told me, I'm sorry, Kareem, the operation has been canceled. Bye. Yep. We actually had a recording of the phone dial tone there. This call, this very sad call, the worst news I have ever received in my life. I got frustrated. I was so much frustrated. I felt that I lost everything. I felt that I'm rejected by God himself. God has rejected me. In Islam, they believe that the the, the people who give their life to God, the martyrdom, they are called by name by God himself. Hey, anyone... Do you know, so is, is this guy in Israel or Palestine? What do you, any, any ideas? No idea. He says he's waiting for a call to do something. Wait, I don't know. I don't oh, know. Yes, uh, I, I have no idea. Isn't it messed up? Like, <laughs> like I'm sitting here thinking, okay, if someone were making up a story, they can make up a story like this. But again, at the same time, I know that there are people who are raised like this and that these things happen because I've seen these over and over again. So it's like, it kind of sounds like a caricature of a terrorist, but lots of the videos I've seen of the of, of the people who are raised as terrorists would sound like something would, would sound exactly the same. I don't know. Mm -hmm. right. It's very hard to make any to tell to say anything about this right now. I don't know. Hey, people have been uh, talking about a accents and so on in the chat, and they've been talking mostly about uh, uh, Scottish. Uh, <laughs> um. Anyone anyone familiar with this particular accent? Hey, you're saying just listen. No, no okay, I'll just listen. Gosh, be calm, man. <laughs> so who said that? Who People said saying, that? Just listen. Just listen. I'm saying, why the, mu why the music? Because that makes it dramatic. Guys, quit complaining. <laughs> so for me, I was not called. After all the prayers, after all the fastings, after all the things I have done, I'm not called. This is a disaster. I started to disappear. I'm not out like before. Until one of the leaders called me and he said, I got to know what happened, Kareem, and I want to meet you. I went to meet him and then he told me, Kareem, why you're so sad? I said, God didn't choose me to die. And this man said a prophecy, I believe. He said, maybe because he chose you to live. I asked him, what should I do now? He said, you need to evangelize. I started to evangelize like never before. I was everywhere, even on TV. In the first days, I was getting dance uh, to, 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 to Islam. But then the problem that I was not satisfied, there was something always missed, you know, something is not there. Here was my first problem because when I went to study with... What are you grinning at? Maybe this is Christian Prince putting on a role and trolling. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't sound like Christian Prince. <laughs> so your theory is exposed. <laughs> um, so. He was on TV? That, that, that's the one thing that I, I don't know. That's interesting. Who's on TV? Who is this? Didn't he say that he was on TV or something? Like even on TV? Isn't that what he just said? That what I just missed here. This guy who's talking, didn't he just say he started evangelizing not, like nothing, like nothing before, and he even went on TV or something Did like he? that? Hang on, let me let me back it up. Now we have to watch it again thanks to... Whoa, that's a good picture. I should have put that one on the thumbnail. <laughs> Let's see. I asked him, what should I do now? He evangelize. said, you need to evangelize. I started to evangelize like never before. I was everywhere. E hang on, hang on. Hang on. Okay, so... <laughs> Uh, Im says this, uh, why do you doubt his sincerity? Again, uh, be, just because I've, to, I've told you this may not be completely rational, but just because a couple of other people in the past have embellished their stories, it causes me to nitpick little things. So like right there when he said uh, the, you know, his, his, uh, the guy above him and whatever terrorists or jihadi cell that he's a part of, 
uh, tells him does you know tells him the mission's been canceled and he's upset because he wanted to die as a martyr. And then he says, "Why?" He says, "Hey, what? Why didn't God choose me?" He said, "Maybe you got something else. You need to evangelize." So, uh, like my brain now picks out evangelize. Why would he say evangelize? That's a Christian word. Why wouldn't he say you know? Uh, why didn't he say uh, go do dawah or something like that? Which notice it, 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 that may have been the case. The guy may have said do dawah, and he might just be uh, breaking it down for a Christian audience that won't know what dawah is or something like that. Anyway, that's the point. I'm not saying I'm not saying anything about this is fake. We're playing it uh, so everyone can get their impressions. But again, I am interested specifically in anyone who might be familiar with this with this guy. Uh, but yes, I have no, I have no, I have no official reason to doubt anything this guy is saying. Um, brother, I have doubt. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, uh, yeah, Morg here is saying for people who are asking about the background music and so on, uh, Morg here says the interviews on one for Israel are a bit dramatic. That's their vibe. So that, yeah, that, that. Uh, might be kind of the culture of their channel with the background music and stuff. So no need to be suspicious about the background music. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We ready yeah, on TV in the first days I was getting dance uh, to, to, I asked him, what should I do now? He said, you need to evangelize. You did say TV. I started to evangelize like never before. I was everywhere, even on TV in the first days I was getting dance uh, to, 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 to Islam. But then the problem that I was not satisfied, there was something always missed, you know. You're right, AP Ezra. I think it's not there. You see, time. always. You see. <laughs> <laughs> and David, if you were wrong about that, what else would you be wrong about? <laughs> Here was my first problem, because Here's when I went to study with Muslim apologists, 80% of what they say is about Christians. Look how they were, look they are without hijab, look what they say. Only 20% about Christianity. And this 20% was not fair academically, because when you want to interpret one verse in the Quran, you need a lot to do. You need to read Asbab al nuzul the reasons, you need to read the commentators, and you read to have basic knowledge of how to interpret. But when he was interpreted... See, that... No, now that just went in his favor. He said commentaries. I'm like, why? Why did? Why didn't he say tafsir? But he said as Bab al Nazul, which would, yeah. okay, all right. So yeah, the Bible. He was just saying, you know, look, Jesus here is saying this and that. It was too obvious to be true, too obvious. And I said to myself, okay, now I need what I call the Christian tablet. So in another way, I want summary of the faith like doctrines, tell me the doctrines. We believe in one, two, three, four, so we know what is wrong with that, which is easy to do, and then we evangelize these Christians. We do da'wah to them. What? I tried, I searched around. It was well, why, very why? hard for me to come with something that I can yes. understand. Or What'd you say? Uh, why does he need that? The Quran already tells you what Christians believe in. The Quran says, uh, and Allah will say to Jesus, did you tell them, did you tell to the people, take me and my mother as deities besides Allah? And Jesus will say, no, I never, I would never do such a thing. So why would he need to go and ask Christians what they believe in? Just take what the Quran says. The Quran tells you. <laughs> Look at this. This is messed up. This is that I keep laughing at his accent now, and I never do that. He sounds sincere, but y'all got me too. That's what I, <laughs> guys, keep in mind, I've said this is a, I've said this is a problem in my head since we started, right? It's like, because, uh, with the Ergen Kainer story, that that was when I was starting out. He was he was one of the popular uh, ex-Muslims. In fact, he was one of the old, he was one of the only ones back then. You're talking, I'm talking before Nabil became a Christian. Um, there were Ergen uh, Ergen Kainer uh, talks and so on like that. And I remember sending one of them to Nabil, saying, "Hey, check this out. This guy's an ex-Muslim and so on." And it's just like uh, now it's like ah, ah I got to check these guys out first. Uh, but again, again, no official reason, no official reason not to trust anything this guy's saying. Um, I just realized that you are talking about the Turkish guy. You're just saying his name in a very uh, Anglicanized way, Ang Anglicized. Whatever. Oh, yeah. So, oh, that's who you're talking about, Ergen. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> do you know the name Ergen? Is... His name would be Ergun Janer in Turkish. So it's it's very, uh, when you say it in that way, it's like, it, now I got now I got it. We're talking about the same person. Oh, so we're uh, talking about the same. So notice, it's, it's a pretty, it appears to be a pretty limited number of people who, embellish their stories so it's probably best not to run rush to judgment when someone says hey you know i was i was gearing my life up for jihad and then 
uh, became a Christian. But there, no, no, there are there are there are people who are suspicious here. Misty Moore says fake. It's fake. See, which so is weird because like if you're putting yourself out there and you're saying you're on TV, there's all this stuff that people could test that, to go and investigate. So it's like, why would you? Why so would you do that? Like it, it actually made sense for for Ergen. He started saying it's like the it's the same as the Dawa guys. Back in the day, you could make stuff up, and it, before the age of uh, mass social media, it was e it wasn't it wasn't very easy for people to fact check you and then expose you and so on. But that got that got easier, and then people eventually did expose him. Uh, but now, in the age of social media, why man? Why would you want to make up a story? That would be dangerous. Yeah. So. It's very grasp until I started to be frustrated. By the end of many weeks, I started to talk to God like, God, you don't want to help me here? I need help. Until one day, I was sitting on my computer and a dial up advertising came up, you know, and the time of dial up before Wi Fi came up. And it was written on it Do you love Allah? I clicked it. I thought it's a Muslim website because they write Allah, you know, Allah is a Muslim word. But I found out that it's a Christian website. It speaks from Genesis till Jesus arrived to earth and resurrected, passing by the most central prophets in the Bible, like Noah, Abraham. This was amazing to the extent that for the first time in my life, I looked and I said, maybe we are wrong? This is kind of impossible for a Salafi to say so. But maybe we are wrong. But who said that God exists? Oh, now he said he's a Salafi, so. Yeah. Did you catch that? He said uh, he said it's difficult for a Salafi to say he's wrong. Okay. Uh, I don't want to say anything, but they usually happen to be the ones who are easily ready to go and fight and die. So. Yeah. Really? Um, yeah, my, my, much, much more easily, I would say. Um, yeah, uh, so anyway, I, I, I'm, I'm checking out the story, but notice right there when he said, uh, what he saw a site and he, he clicked on it cause it, it said, uh, do you love Allah or something like that? And he clicks on it and then found out it's a Christian site and then goes through it and so on. And, uh, those are actually positive signs. Cause I'm always thinking, is this the sort of thing someone would make up? Is that the, if once the, uh, once the uh, embellishment detector goes on or or can I trust this person goes on, it's uh, OK. If he's if he said that, is that the sort of thing someone would make up if they're making something up? Is this the sort of thing someone would make up if they're making things up? And some of it's difficult because if you were making up a story uh, about, you know, your radical transformation, you might make up a story about having a, a you know, jihad background or something like that but there are actual people with jihad backgrounds so that could go either way but then when he's saying you know hey i went to a website notice it's not uh it wasn't so then i spent 10 years doing research and studying all the muslim sources to look for problems then i studied all the great christian scholars to uh to uh to uh to see if, if the evidence supported christianity Sounds kind of sounds kind of authentic saying, hey, I saw a website and I clicked on it and then that got me thinking or something like that. So that in other words, that's less dramatic. That's less that the, the, the drama's dialed down there. I would, to be honest, uh, if I made up a, a, a false, a fake story, I would make up a less suspicious fake story. Uh, like I would say, you know, I grew up in, uh, in, a, in a Turkish Muslim family in Germany, uh, lived in Germany for a while, then moved to Turkey. Then I just started practicing Islam. Uh, became slowly religious and you know after you know certain life events i began questioning islam after reading it like several times and then i then i left then i moved to america i, I would i would make up something less suspicious like that mm -hmm. uh yeah but <laughs> yeah yeah and, and that that's what that's what's interesting i mean like with ergen kaner it was basically his dad was Muslim. His mom wasn't. He ended up living with his mom and he still considered himself a Muslim. And then like in high school or something like that, you know, one of his fellow students started inviting him to church and he went there and he became a Christian. And that's the story. Uh, guess what? <laughs> that's that's fine. You don't need you don't need to. And then I was sent here as part of the youth jihad program and. Uh, you, you don't need, you don't need to make, make stuff up guys. Yeah. There are people who went through some crazy stuff, but that doesn't, don't, don't, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't think you're glorifying God by making stuff up. Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, actually, actually, we have wait, we have some comments from people who are a bit who are a little more familiar with him than because that was the first time I saw him. Um, we have here's uh, he's Egyptian. I think he learned English later in life, hence the accent. I don't have any problem with the accent. I'm just wondering. I was just wondering mainly where it's from. Uh, they're saying Egyptian. He has a testimony in Arabic, and it sounds more natural. He says he talked with Zachariah Boutros. Uh, I think his story is pretty amazing. And then uh, historian here says. Uh, he is not fake. If he ends uh, being fake, he has to uh, take an Oscar. Ask Mike Lacona and have. Oh, okay. So no, no, this is interesting. It's Mike Lacona and Gary Habermas. I know both those guys. So sounds like he knows them. All right, all right, guys. So this is actually looking. This is looking a little bit better. A little bit better. So your skepticism is misplaced, AP. <laughs> but guys, no, notice this is this is this is part of the reason. So one as far as not making up stories, not embellishing your stories and so on. Uh, one is it's just wrong to do that. But two, if you're just thinking in practical, if you're not even thinking about right and wrong, you're just thinking about purely practical terms, uh, when you're eventually exposed, and if you're making stuff up, I hope you are eventually exposed. I'm not talking about this guy. I'm talking about anyone in general. Uh, if you're making stuff up, you know, it's good that you're eventually exposed. But then you raise the suspicion level in people's minds when they hear, you know, when they hear a dramatic story and, the, you know, you heard this other dramatic story and it turned out to be made up. Then you're like, ah, is this guy making it up too? So anyway. Uh, you don't have to meticulously, uh, you know, like um, analyze it and see if it's true or right or wrong. Just, just do what the Muslims do. They, they just take anybody, any, like like Sneeko, uh, saying I was a I was a Catholic and I was I really believe in it. And they I was the Pope. I, <laughs> they would fall for that if some guy says if if some guy came out and said some some old guys like I was the Pope. I was the Pope for ten years and then I and then I, I converted to Islam. The power <laughs> I heard I heard the Adhan and when I was visiting. <laughs> So I converted them. Oh, I'm the love. It would get millions of views, dude. You should you should make a shake your booty video like that where you're uh, you claim to be the Pope or something. <laughs> oh boy! All right, that, that could work. It's not even uh, an exaggeration. It totally work. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. What is the difference between a cult and a religion? Uh, religion is usually bigger. Um, but, uh, but, uh, but a cult, I mean, you could have different definitions of cult, but a cult is normally a, normally a weird offshoot of something, of something else, which is why some people say that Islam should be considered, uh, a, a cult of Christianity because of the, you know, what a cult does is it takes, it, 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 it claims to be in the same line with something else, but then starts denying or altering some of the fundamental core doctrines. Um, and so notice Islam actually does that. It, it, it agrees with the virgin birth and the miracles of Jesus and God and prophets and even that Jesus, the Messiah and so on, but then corrupts the core teachings of the gospel. Um, so yeah, there, there's a, there's not always a clear line because it would be considered religion because it's so massive, but you could view it as a, as a cult. My favorite cult, Jonestown. Jim Jones. That, yeah, that's the, the, now that's a cult. But notice that was, that was supposed to be Christian, even though, oh, that's the, that's another characteristic of a cult. They tend to rally around someone who must not, uh, you know, some particular figure who, um, who uh, makes all your decisions for you, does all your thinking for you, <laughs> typically starts asking for your wives and demanding your wives and daughters and stuff like that. Uh, yeah. It seems, seems disturbingly common among cults. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, there are there are cases where you could argue something is a cult or or a religion, depending on you know what definition you're going with. And I started to see that I don't have any evidence for anything. I don't have evidence for Islam. I don't have evidence enough evidence for God Himself, which led me to atheism. And I, when I was a hey, hey, Fee, here's your boy. <laughs> oh yeah, let him to atheism. Let me back this up. You see this? I had no evidence, so I became a dumb atheist. <laughs> I have evidence for Islam. I don't have evidence enough evidence for God Himself, which led me to atheism. And I, when I was atheist, I did everything you can imagine. And then I was so tired. Ah, see that he did everything you can imagine. <laughs> That's the only part where my radar goes up, and I feel like, ah, oh, cat okay, sounds a little bit cliche, just like uh. I don't know when when people become atheists, they don't usually they don't usually do what 
people often claim they do, which is just, you know, go out and do everything you want. All it's exactly the what you did, Herbert. <laughs> So uh, that that doesn't usually happen, but but that said, no reason to uh, to doubt. I, I have no reason to doubt this guy's story. It just it, it is kind of a, a stereotype and a cliche, but it, it it could very well be true that he did. I mean, I, admittedly, when I when I left Islam, I did uh, become interested in uh, engaging some of the uh, haram things, like, like incest, incest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't that what they always say? <laughs> like as soon, as soon as an atheist brings up anything, what about incest? <laughs> so with, with that said, notice you come from you came from a different background that this guy came from. I think it actually might be it might that might be more common for the Salafi types where there's not a lot of like internal internalizing of morality as far as like your only concern is outward punishments or something like this, either in this life or in the next life, which are your only reasons for being good. And so if you took that away, I could imagine someone just going off the deep end saying, I can do whatever I want now. But you're right. You and I noticed the same thing. It's like, OK, if I were making up a story, that would be a, you know, a good a good thing to toss in there. Then I became an atheist and uh, started committing incest all over the place because there's no morality in atheism. <laughs> Uh, but at the same time, you can see exactly what, the, where this guy's coming from. If you started to doubt, if something led you to start doubting and then you start thinking, why do I even believe in God or something like that and become an atheist? Okay. Why am I following all these rules at all anymore? Cause you know, we don't, we don't know what he's talking about. He might be just thinking, ah, I went up and started drinking a bunch and partying or something like you, that. You just know. go for the, for the extreme example there because Muslims often say that, but you know, uh, <laughs> what, what you would actually do, I mean, what I did for example, was to, to go and, uh, enjoy some alcohol, like go you to see? a club. That's why you left was... Islam. You only left okay. because you, you wanted That's pork it. and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> That's you it. Wanted... And after a while I realized, okay, you know, um, it's 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 good that it's no longer extremely forbidden, and it's it's good that you are no longer scared of some very basic things. But it's not really that special, so <laughs> you just move on. I don't know. Uh, Count uh, Buga here says, uh, like Daniel last night. I haven't seen that yet. Uh, I was on a plane, but he said, like Daniel last night, man continuously kept trying to call atheists and secular people adulterers, child molesters, and incestuous cretins, yet also said pedophilia was fine with parents' consent. Yeah. He also lied about what he said to, to IP. He, uh, Matt rightly, uh, you know, made his notes uh, and said, uh, you are the one saying that uh, that a four-year-old can be, you know, that, that, that one can have sex with a four-year-old girl. And he was like, no, I never said that. And Matt was like, wait a minute. You're lying right now. You did say that. He specifically asked uh, you. We might need to do a live stream on that if someone else doesn't, because no, he totally, he totally, to. like, like, hey, if he, once you, he, once, he said, if she starts showing signs of maturity yeah. or something like that, that's what he was saying. He denied it, he, he, he denied it again after Matt pushed him. Uh oh. So I'm, I'm definitely going to post something on that. No, and I'm that, also going. That yeah. was the main thing that, that Daniel had going for him was. He he seemed to acknowledge a lot of what Islam teaches without trying to cover it up like like most of the Dawah guys do. And now, and he now he's trying to cover up his own stuff. Not good. Dude. Not a good direction, Daniel. You're Dude. losing the one thing you had going for you. Don't be a dishonest, Daniel. Don't join those. Uh, look, look, at, and look, look at this. So Wait, did he say this? Said, uh, and he also said that Mike agrees with him on children having sex. I didn't, I didn't see the thing, but I saw uh, Inspiring Philosophy earlier posted a thing uh, I think he said Matt Dillahunty corrected him or something. I mean, corrected Daniel on this or something like this. And yeah, so, it, uh, he said Daniel claimed that uh, IP actually agrees with him that, uh, that nine year old. No, uh, he does not. Can have sex, and, and Matt Matt said uh, that I know for a fact that that is not true. That's so, definitely um, not true. You cannot find <laughs> someone who's more against <laughs> child sex than inspiring philosophy. The the guys either uh, very. You know, incapable of, of understanding what his opponent says, or he just goes for the lies. And I don't know. Which one do you think? <laughs> yeah. Oh, but I mean, this is bad. I mean, I mean, we've already noticed the problems. Like, like Daniel is is very frequently honest about what Islam teaches and so on. And to his credit, he doesn't seem 
like hijab and Ali Dawa, they seem like they're doing it just for themselves. Like, I, I don't, it doesn't even seem like at the end of the day, their main concern is Islam. It's, it seems like the end of the day, their, their concern is their own egos and stuff like this and boosting themselves up in popularity and so on. Uh, Daniel does, with Daniel, it seems like Islam is a form of social control for him. Like, what do I do about all this stuff that's going wild in society? Oh, Islam is the only thing that can save us. So I'm going to cling to Islam. Um, but you know, he, he, he's typically been honest about, you know, Hey, Islam allows wife beating and child marriage and, uh, you know, sex slaves and all this stuff, but he's been very sloppy when he says, Oh, this is what this source says. He's normally, it's normally a disaster. He's normally like, and inspiring philosophy found this out by going to actual studies that Daniel cites and finding out they don't say what he says they say. And then I, I saw it when he was just like, oh, did you know that in the Catholic Encyclopedia it says that Mary is 12? I was like, wait, I've read the Catholic Encyclopedia article. They do not say that. They, they say they specifically say we don't know. So think red flags like that have gone up. But now, I, I don't know if now if he's using gaslighting as his man. I never said that. You did say we got it on video. Nope, never happened. Yeah, he, he they, used. They, CG, uh, they CGI'd that debate. That was CGI when I said that. <laughs> he said, um, because Mike did not agree because Mike uh, did not agree that the children that engage in, you know, activities should be locked up, should be imprisoned. Yeah. That means Mike agrees that, uh, that the children. Oh, that it's okay. okay. No, yeah. Children. Yeah. Not, not what you're saying. Saying that you shouldn't be, you know, sentenced to death or even locked up or something for something does not mean you're saying that something is okay. In fact, I mean, Mike was perfectly clear on that. Mike's yeah, perfectly clear was. on his position. So yeah, that's just slimy, Dan. It seems like he might, might be a little, uh, a little hurt, a little hurt over over the uh, aftermath of the debate and wants to clean things up. But yeah, gaslighting ain't going to work, Daniel. This is the issue. But Daniel Kikichu has been exposed by fellow Muslims even and by uh, by others for uh, blatantly, openly lying about what others have said and what he himself said. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I mean, to me, he said directly that Yahweh is a pagan God's name, which the, the uh, which, which the people adopted from a pagan religion. And uh, just later, during the same day, he made a follow up post in which he claimed that he didn't say that. And he still he still he still clings to that whole uh, narrative that he didn't say that, that he was misunderstood. He had a discussion with Jay Dyer and Jay Dyer brought it up that he said that to me. And Daniel now now denies that he ever said that. And wow. when I ask him for verification, he doesn't engage with it. So the guy, you know, the guy is obviously a liar. And it's just strange. I don't know. He might have had a good start in terms of being honest about what Islam teaches, but he might have just he might have picked up on the fact over time, which is this is the problem in Dawah. We've said it before. You're manipulating your group, but your group conditions you in response of what you can mm -hmm. get away with. And this is a problem in, in the Dawah community that people like Ali Dawah just routinely make stuff up. They, 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 it's, I mean, Andrew Tate is the perfect example. He can completely contradict everything he's ever said and said, I've never done or said any of that before, or something like that. And his fans will just go with whatever he said, even if it's even if it would literally take you five seconds to see how he's been refuted. It's just you you don't question him. Matter of fact, this actually fits in with like uh, uh, cult tactics. So the Dawa guys use cult tactics to condition their followers into never questioning or challenging any new thing they say, even if they're mm -hmm. contradicting themselves, even if they're lying. And Daniel may be affected by his followers over time, realizing I can make stuff up all I want. And my fans are just going to side with me because that's what they do. Yeah. Tragic, tragic, tragic. Uh, Chris, no Chris yeah. in Christ says uh, his name is Kareem al Akweli, and he is a former Salafi advocate from Egypt. I did some digging. Oh, nice, nice. Um, nice. Control Yourself says, without Islam, without lies, Islam dies. It was actually funny, IP saying that recently. I, IP started, started using the slogan. <laughs> uh, let's see. White Lily says, Muslims told me I left Islam and became a Christian so I can walk the streets drunk and sleep with... When, yeah, that is, that is very typical if you... If you leave Islam, they can never seem to grant the idea that you leave Islam because you you don't believe it or you don't believe there's evidence for it. You believe that Muhammad's a false prophet or you believe that something else is actually true. They can't grant that. So they have to attribute it 
to some ulterior motive. And it's built into Islam because Allah does this all the time. It, it's, 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 if, you, if, you are, if you are not believing in Islam, it's because you have some ulterior motive and not because you think Muhammad is, a, is obviously a false prophet or something like that. And so if you leave Islam, it's because you want to commit incest and, uh, and be drunk and eat a ton of pork and sleep around. And that's, you, you just, yep, you're not, a, you're not a fan of having any concept of morality. And that's why you, uh, that's why you leave Islam. And matter of fact, it was, it was interesting because when Nabil left Islam, everyone was saying, uh, th he, he was getting all these messages one, you would see messages like, no, you, you're, you, you've always been a Christian. Your family's Christian. You're just lying to make this stuff. I was like, OK, uh, no, not if you know. Him. Um, or you're, you're, you're being paid. You're, you're being paid to convert. And that's why you're doing it and so on. And with his family, his family knew none of that was true. They know he wasn't going to convert for money or for anything else. So they had to like some of his family members, he told me, think that I'm like a champion brainwasher and I brain, I spent years brainwashing him and stuff like that. Notice they could, which is hilarious because Nabil is one of the smartest people I've ever known. That's kind of but, a compliment. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a con, like they think I'm like this, this <laughs> genius mastermind, which is partly correct, but it, it's not going to work on someone <laughs> like Nabil. Um, but it was just interesting, like that even his family couldn't say, look, you get, you raised him to believe in Islam. You raised him to believe there's all this evidence. He eventually investigated it and thought the arguments were weak and bogus. And he thought he thought the he thought the arguments for Christianity were better, especially when he starts having dreams and visions and so on like that. That sort of pushes him uh, pushes him to take it even more seriously. But they they can't they can't grant that God was guiding him through dreams. They can't grant that the evidence pointed to something else. They can't grant that there are problems with the arguments for Islam. So it ha it always has to be something else. It can't just be no. You don't have good evidence that Muhammad is a false um, was a prophet. You, you you have good evidence that he's a false prophet. Yeah, um, yeah. Because what do you say when people have doubts? You say, uh, "Brother, I have doubts." <laughs> Oh wait, I, I didn't include that one. Yeah, I need to. I need to. Update anyway, I'm uh, gonna have to get one of those, and then I'll I'll put different ones on there, and we can uh, we can just be firing off at all <laughs> all times. Uh, Mallow here said uh, said I know that I noticed that too. Daniel is honest like Lipham, but still a liar and weird persona. That's what I find weird. It's like he's uh, like <laughs> if you're gonna be honest about something, why are you gonna be honest about wife beating and child marriage, but then lie about what you said in a video? Right, it's or lie about what your opponent, what your opponent's views are. Why, why that stuff? Why the stuff? Why the stuff that is like so incredibly easy to just do a quick video check? Don't know. See, stuff that makes me makes me think uh, maybe it is true after all that Daniel Nikikichu is an is a paid agent uh, who is working to make Islam look bad. <laughs> I don't know. You could make an argument that any one of these Dalo guys is a paid agent from from what based yeah. on what they're doing because they're doing a good job. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Beatrice says, uh, David, I know it's off topic, but I would really like to know your view on the Shabbat. Love from Brazil and stay away from Islam. Oh, I used your, hey, you stole that line from AP. <laughs> How dare my, you? I want money for that. My view on, the, sa my view on the Sabbath rest is that we're in it. In it. Uh, let's You're see. You're watching Netflix. Yeah. The count here uh, says uh, pedophilia is fine, but dating a trans person? It is interesting how <laughs> how they go. Hey, we can beat women, and we're gonna we're gonna subjugate the entire world, and we can have sex slaves, and uh, we can have, mess around with these little girls, and and uh, hey, but you guys, you atheists, <laughs> you can drink. <laughs> like, wait a minute. <laughs> if 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 one guy over here is about to drink a beer, and this guy over here. Is about to have sex with a nine-year-old girl. I, I think a properly moral, a, a, a proper moral, uh, moral compass is going to see one of those as significantly worse. Of course, the and alcohol. Islam reverses it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Gosh. All right. Quit interrupting uh, this guy, man. We're trying to. We're trying to. There was also this funny thing where he um, he keeps talking about how apostates deserve to be killed and laws must be imposed and this and that. And then he gets so upset because Matt keeps using the F word. <laughs> and he... he <laughs> that's, like, that's the point. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> Molesting babies. Fine. 
11 months old as long as you get parental permission. <laughs> Saying, dropping an F-bomb. <laughs> He started complaining to James, like, uh, can, can he just do that? Like, uh, why is nobody stepping in? Can you tell him not to use the word? <laughs> well, that's funny. Why was, why would, because I've, I've seen Matt where he, he, he's not cursing and stuff. Was he doing it like deliberately because Daniel well, has such first, repulsive views and he's like, oh, let me go ahead and uh, push some buttons here? First off, Matt got, uh, you know, Matt doesn't have a very good temper. And, uh, but he got sick. Because he's an atheist. Yeah, they have no, yeah, atheists I, have no self control. See, we're speaking to Daniel Kikic because the guy he, he just got really enraged by the stuff that Daniel Kikic says and how he argues. And uh, then when he started saying really atrocious things, and when he started complaining about the F word, he just kept doing it and made it worse and said, I say, I say whatever they I F and say whatever the F and F I want, and you cannot say a, a, a single effing thing about this. Uh, <laughs> and, that's, it's, that's, in, that's interesting because uh, I'm, I'm not going to do that in particular, but you and me, you and I both have the same reaction in terms of you don't control me. And when you try to tell me what I'm allowed to do, then uh, I, I'm, I really want to do the opposite all of a sudden. And I want, moreover, I want you to know that you don't get to control me. And when you tell me what, you're, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the opposite until you get the point. Um, so yeah, if, if Daniel doesn't like that, then you can, make, you can always make it a debate stipulation in the future saying, do we agree? In order for me to agree to this debate, then... then uh, can my opponent agree to these terms or something like that? Well, there, there was a highlight, which I mentioned briefly to you before we went live, but uh, around two hours and 30 minutes into the debate, um, Daniel Daniel kept insulting Matt, uh, and, and Matt said, uh, just shut the F up. And then Daniel said, how about you come and say that right here? <laughs> and, I heard about and, that one. No, that one's, that one's terrible. Actually, that one's hilarious. Matt actually got up. <laughs> immediately went over to him and said it again to him and he's like so so what's what's gonna happen here i am i'm saying it <laughs> and, and daniel is, is just sitting there timidly and just waiting for somebody to step in and, and stop him and <laughs> that's so funny weird. that's funny hey i'm gonna have to i'm gonna have to actually check that out we might need to do a do a little recap on some of that stuff see we're sitting here trying to watch this video by this uh by this dude kareem and then we're talking about this other action-packed stuff <laughs> Yeah, we need to check that out. <laughs> yeah, we might need to check that out. I don't know. I kind of like that stuff because you know, uh, you know, that's uh, uh, that's Matt Dillahunty, champion of atheism. But I have to, I have to, I have to admire the um, the method there of hey, I'm dealing with a guy with some really, really messed up views that can affect a lot of people, and he's trying, to, and he thinks he control me. What? I get that. I totally get that. <laughs> yeah. This is from Sheikh, Sheikh Boy RD. He says, uh, as a psychopath, I should be a Muslim. I would have great company with Mo. I met Sheikh Boy RD out, out in California. Uh, yeah, he walked up and he said, greetings from a fellow psychopath. That's always the best way to start a conversation. It's uh, I, I have often thought about that because people have asked me, hey, what if you had converted to Islam instead of Christianity in prison? I, was, I think I would have had a pretty different, uh, pretty different life from that point on. Yeah, uh, but I don't think Muhammad. I don't think Muhammad was a psychopath because he cried too much. No, he was. He was an emotional person. Uh, I think he was mentally ill on a different level. He was. Uh, yeah, he had some other problems. He had some psychotic issues, I would say. And we've talked about in the past. We've talked about something called uh, dis. It's not considered a mental disorder anymore. Muhammad definitely had some mental disorders, but there's uh, what's called. Uh, a dissocial psychopath, which used to be in the DSM, but isn't anymore because it's not an actual mental disorder. That's where you start adapt adopting the behaviors of a psychopath so that you appear in certain ways as a psychopath. Like people have pointed out, hey, look at all this stuff Daniel talks about with killing and, and beheading people and all this stuff. And is he a psychopath? Uh, no, it seems like he's just adopted adapted those views. But anyway, the classic example is like someone you know joining the mafia or joining a gang or something like that, where they're not a psychopath. They weren't born a psychopath, but because those behaviors are adaptive, you know, killing and so on or whatever you need to do, um, that you you start becoming more and more 
like someone who appears to be a psychopath and so on. So I think Muhammad is like that just by thinking that he's getting revelation, saying he can go around slaughtering people all the time. And then his followers just continuing to agree with whatever he said. Yeah, some of the stuff he did looks and would make you think that if you if you didn't know anything else about him, you didn't know about the times he cries and how emotional he was and so on. You just saw certain things he was doing. And, hey, this guy's a psychopath. This man oh. has real problems. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a sma I got to smash that device when I see it. Man. <laughs> All, right. All right. We've been chatting for like 20 some minutes. All right, let's go. Because I started to feel that atheism is not an alternative. That's and true. And inside me, I feel that there is. You hear that? Why, why did I? And why did I stop it? Let me go back. Pause it, stop, pause it. <laughs> he's just. I like it that he's wrecking atheism, talking about how how, how repulsive you guys are. Who said that God exists? And I started to see that I don't have any evidence for anything. I don't have evidence for Islam. I don't have evidence enough evidence for God Himself, which led me to atheism. And when I was atheist, I did everything you can imagine. That's what atheists. And then did. I was so tired because I started to feel that atheism is not an alternative. That's true. And inside me, I feel that there is a God, and I deal with myself as if there is a God that I talk to inside me. Until one day, I was fed up. I came back home, many problems, many things that I cannot bear myself. And I looked at the sky and I said, "You know what?" You are too big for me. I cannot find you. Please do something. I'm too small for you. Just do something and find me. It's not hard for you if you are there. This I've actually heard uh, multiple times from people that I knew weren't lying. So like Nabil eventually got to a point where he's like, God, can you just give me a sigh? I do not know. I mean... Islam makes sense to me, but I don't know if that's because of the way I'm raised. I, it looks like Christians actually have reasons for things that can you can you just show me something here so I so I'm not left in this you know not knowing what to do here. But then we, we were talking about you talk to him on the phone for a minute. I don't I don't know if he wants to be you know public or something. But we were just uh, when I was in California, I put you on the phone for for a minute with a guy. He was a Muslim. Um, he, who became an atheist, but he said that when things would go bad in life, then he would start th wondering if Allah's punishing him. So even though he doesn't believe in God anymore, he's kind of he's kind of raised to believe that Allah punishes you for disobedience. And then so, hey, when something bad happens, there's this confirmation of that. But uh, it notice you can you can raise someone to believe things. And then you can reject them, but they still had an impact on you. Like, even if you reject Islam, it still has had an impact on you. And, uh, you know, later in life, you kind of, I don't know, is this, is this a law? Am I, am I being punished here? And so on. So this guy's saying um, he was raised as Muslim, started doubting it, became an atheist, then started thinking, well, no, I, I, I still believe. I mean, I still believe in God. I still believe in God. Uh, I still feel like there's a God. And then so kind of crying out like, hey, can, can you can you just can you do something here? Can you show me? So. This I think, yeah, that, that, sounds, that sounds like a common occurrence. Um, I can I can say that I had the same thing. Um, I came to different conclusions. Uh, but even when you when we speak about, um, you know, being kind of conditioned to thinking that whatever is happening in your life right now is because of because of your actions, because of some rep repercussions that you're getting uh, from Allah, especially in Islam, which is a religion that um, that basically polices every single moment, every single thing that you do. Uh, it, it's it's really hard to get over that. And for me, I can I can say honestly today that uh, even until a few years ago, when I was making videos, I would still uh, in private in times of hardship. Um, like have have doubts and feel like you know is is this is this a punishment is this something that is is this you know the divine getting back at me or something like that it's, it's just very hard to get over that and i would i would ask it then it takes a lot of time to get over that so yeah no mm -hmm. this this all of this is kind of a common occurrence mm -hmm. on this night i slept and in my dream Okay, so this is where I remember I wasn't watching it very closely yesterday, but it looks like he's going into a dream. So this happened after he asked God. Well, this is very I mean, this is this is a, 
this is very similar to what Nabil said, um, where he asked God for a sign because he didn't know. And then he, yeah, oh, well, he asked, yeah, he asked for a sign. Then he saw a vision of crosses and so on. And then asked God for a dream and then had a dream. So, yeah, let me back this up just a little bit. So since I interrupted him. He's, he slept and people usually do that. So that sounds authentic. Yeah. Someday and find me. It's not hard for you if you are there. On this night, I slept. And in my dreams, I saw that I'm running in a very long road. A lot of tree branches full of thorns chasing me want to kill me. And at the end of the road, there were a man that I do not recognize. And I, I, I shouted, please help me do something. He just extended his hand, put his hand on my shoulder and brought me before him. And once he looked at me, I found out that this is Jesus Christ. And he looked deep in my eyes and he said, it's your time to follow me. I woke up on my dreams and I said to myself, okay, this is hallucinations, you know, this is. Also, uh, also similar to Nabil, he, he saw his, he saw his, uh, he saw a vision of crosses and then so, oh, I mean, how do I know I'm not just, you know, how do I know that's not a hallucination or something like that? So that's why he asked for a dream. Hallucinations. I think that, um, it's not true. Why Jesus come to me, you know? But in the next night, I got the same dream, the same details. I looked up to the to the sky, to the heavens once I woke up and I said, you know what? This is this is this is not a joke here. I challenge you. If you can come to me one more time with the same details. Otherwise, I will not think of you again. This too, this, uh, like Nabil has the vision and then he asks for a dream and then he has the dream. And then he says, how about, how about three dreams? So there's also this element of, ah, it's not quite enough. Can you do something more here? And, uh, it's interesting. So it's interesting. People in the chat are having different uh, views. So, uh, Jesus bot here says Kareem sounds sincere here. And then Alex says, meh, I don't believe him. Um, Alex, Alex, Alex says, uh, Christians want to believe him. Hey, Alex, I don't know if you've been paying attention. I'm the one who said, Hey, I'm the one who said, yeah, there are people who make things up. So why don't we take a closer look uh, at him? Um, and we've pointed out repeatedly, Hey, this is, this sounds like something that someone, uh, could make up if you were making up a story, but there are people who have those experiences. And so there are people, there, there are people who have been through that stuff. And we've pointed out where eh, this sounds authentic here. And it's been pointed out, uh, some people who did a little background on him and, uh, he's apparently known by Gary Habermas and Mike Lacona and Zachariah Boutros and so on. So... Yeah, but at the same time, I get I get looking at this saying, I don't know this, I don't know this guy. He could have made this up. So that's true. I thought that he would never come. But he came. And this time he looked deep in my eyes and he said, Didn't I tell you? Didn't I tell you? It's your time to follow me. I woke up while I cannot believe that this is true. I cannot believe that God is so loving. God is so amazing. God is, God is so open. He didn't care that I'm challenging him. He was not feeling attacked. He was not feeling insulted. He was feeling that I love this guy and I want him. So he just came to me. I didn't woke up as a Christian, but I woke up as a man who's seeking the truth and knowing one thing that this Jesus Christ is more than a prophet. This Jesus Christ is not what we think that he is. I was lucky to find someone to help me with that. And after three years, I got baptized. That's interesting. He said three years. So he has these uh, dreams and so on. Says he didn't wake up as a Christian, but uh, he was on the path. And he said three years later, baptized. In the name of Father. What are you grinning at before? 
I harshly rebuke you. We're listening to a story here. And you're like, oh, 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 oh I just thought of something funny. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> what? What are you laughing at? Nothing, nothing, nothing. I'm, I'm going to say a few things about this when he's finished with his words. I'm just... Yeah, because you always have to nitpick everybody and yeah. uh, tell people to become atheists. Uh, Genesis uh, 5020 says, Nabil's mom was a Muslim missionary. Her mom was a mis uh, Muslim missionary. His dad, uh, a Pakistani staunch Muslim. And yet the Muslims say Nabil was never one. Yeah, that's what's funny. I mean, I get it if you say uh, there are those who say, ah, he was in he was an Ahmadi or something like that. He was an Ahmadi and therefore he wasn't a real Muslim, uh, which is which is crazy. If you look at Muhammad's definitions of Muslims, uh, Ahmadis uh, fit the criteria. They have a different view of end times. They have a different view of end times. They say, ah, they believe that someone came after Muhammad. Yeah, all Muslims are supposed to believe in someone after Muhammad. You're supposed to believe in the second coming of Jesus. Ahmadis have an admittedly weird view that this already happened, that Jesus, uh, the second coming of Jesus was this guy, Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, and so on. Uh, and if you want to say having a weird view of end times means that you're not a Muslim in spite of everything else you're doing, you know, they, they believe in the five pillars and the six articles and so on. If you say that means you're not a Muslim, I don't think I've ever met a Muslim because I, <laughs> I haven't met... I can't think of any Muslim I've ever met where I can't point to something in your sources where you're getting it wrong according to your sources. And I don't even think it's possible to be to be in line with all your sources because the sources contradict each other on so many things. So you can point to anyone from any group and say you're getting this wrong. Um, but but there are people who think that the entire story is made up, that Nabil was always a Christian or something like this, and he just made up the story. And yeah, that's, that's the problem with uh, being suspicious about this story is this guy tried to convert me to Islam for four years straight. And guess what? He was he was not there were times when we discussed Mirza Ghulam Ahmed and so on, but he was he was pretty much he was pretty much always going after uh the Quran and scientific miracles and perfect preservation of the Quran and Muhammad's the greatest man ever. So it's what what I heard for, for four years from Nabil was exactly what I hear from Dawah guys. So the idea, nope, uh, it's all made up, kind of weird. Yeah. Yeah. Now we got to go ahead and finish this clip because AP wants to make fun of things. Yeah. Son, yeah. Holy Spirit. And the thing is right. Let's see. what we Baptized. think that he is. I was lucky to find someone to help me with that. And after three years, I got baptized in the name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And the thing is since I was baptized, everything started to change. Every look started to change. I started to see people differently. For the first time of my life, I started to learn that I can love others unconditionally. We traveled somewhere in another... That, I have to, I can verify that point. Uh, we had totally different backgrounds, but as a Salafi who wants to subjugate other people and then becoming a Christian where everyone's created in the image of God and you're commanded to love everyone, that changes your view. But I've experienced that. It wasn't a Salafi background, but it was like I I viewed people as like these disgusting, stupid blobs of cells who think they're important when they're this like cosmic joke. And then, yes, that changed when I became a Christian. So here I can actually uh, see something similar. So I viewed people the way all atheists view people. <laughs> For the first time of my life, I started to learn that I can love others unconditionally. We traveled somewhere in another country due to the persecution we, we had. And uh, it was not easy for us. But what happened abroad was so unique. I got invitation from one of the associations that work in the synagogue. I accepted the invitation and I went for the first time in one of the halls of the synagogue. This is interesting. He went to a synagogue. So is he talking like a messianic? I guess. I guess. So. That's interesting. It's interesting that he's Egyptian, left the country. And went to a messianic. Let me re rewind this again, because uh, I don't know. I don't know what he means by. Does anyone else know? Like, I, I know that this is one for Israel, so this is uh, messianic. Um, but is he talking about a messianic synagogue here? I accepted the invitation, and I went for the first time in one of the halls of the synagogue. 
I was invited to be a keynote speaker in one of the events to speak about um, my testimony and what happened with me. So I said to them, for the first time, I can tell you, God healed me and I can say that I love you. I love you. God is love and he poured his love in our hearts. He poured his love in our hearts. And this is what we learned. Amen. Yeah, so I guess he's talking about um, going to Messianic Jews and uh, going to a Messianic synagogue and learning. That's interesting. Like, like, um, like I'm wondering like why he went there, but that may have been like the, the tie-in specifically, because again, if it's a Messianic channel, that he probably spoke at a bunch of places and spoke at churches and so on. They probably emphasized that for uh, for their channel, like how he got in touch with uh, Messianic Jews. Uh, anyway, what what were you what were you cracking up laughing about and uh, destroying everyone's concentration, other than for the purpose of distracting everyone from this uh, testimony? Uh, I was saying I'm doubt I'm doubting his background as a Muslim because he doesn't have that thing on his forehead. Uh, that Salafi Muslims very often have because they rub their foreheads on the floor when they pray to make it to make everyone know that they pray a lot. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's just not kidding. Just kidding. Uh, hey, do you put one of do you put one of those on there for your shaky uh, shaky booty? Oh wait, no, no I, I mean, oh yeah, you should. <laughs> you should be, you should be like the biggest one ever. <laughs> <laughs> you should do an entire video and be like. <laughs> a TikTok video, <laughs> just you. <laughs> I was asking IP. Me and IP went through a video, and this guy's just doing that. And I was like, "What the heck is he doing here the entire time?" And uh, yeah, IP was like, "No, that's a TikTok thing. You keep pointing to things and so on." So yeah, you can make, you can just make I a video. Do a makeup routine video where I just uh, where I just put this giant thing on my forehead to make everyone think I pray a lot. Uh, but no, um, so. I don't know when we talk about his this, this guy's testimony. So uh, I can still stick to what I said at the beginning. I guess um, there is no reason for me to doubt his story, his experience. No reason for me to doubt somebody's at the bruise. Yes, I mean the bruise, um, the bruise on the forehead. Uh, somebody. Uh, so th there, there is no reason for me to doubt this, his story. Kareem's story it might very well be be true and it, it seems authentic that he did have this experience uh that he did leave Islam he did uh become an atheist and he did eventually have these dreams and and then convert the issue with dreams is that it's obviously a personal experience it's anecdotal nobody can possibly fact check or verify it. The same thing with um, occurrences when something only appears to you. I mean, even if you said something came from the sky and appeared to me, like nobody else can verify that. It's, it's just your personal experience. Hey, pa pa but, pa hey, pause that real quick before you continue because I'm going to forget. Okay, I'm going to share. Sorry. I'm going to share something I never heard before. I, I never shared. I don't think I've ever shared it before. I don't think I even told Nabil. But uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell. I'll say it now just because <laughs> you just said something about it. But. It was when, when Nabil was telling me about his first dream. That was the one that was all symbolic. And it was like, uh, he's, he's, he's living at, he's living on this mountain and then he's, he zooms out away from it. And he's actually the, the back of a, a giant iguana and so on. And he, he comes to think later when he's interpreting, it, he comes to think that this is Islam. And then he says, a giant boy shows up. A giant boy shows up and like uh, smushes the iguana and says, I challenge you to a duel and so on. And then the uh, the iguana turns and is about to eat Nabil. And then a cricket shows up from the boy and chops the iguana's head off and so on. And so Nabil actually went to his books because they take dreams seriously. And uh, anyway, he interpreted this as He's living in Islam, so he's living on the back of this thing and not realizing that it's actually this thing that's that's there to destroy him. He interprets the giant boy as me showing up because he's he, he's later told me, like, that's what I think of you. I think of you like this giant, goofy boy. 
Um, and then the cricket is Christ who shows up and, and chops the head off of Islam. Anyway, Nabil, when Nabil told me, he said, hey, I want to talk about this dream I had. I don't remember where we were, but it had outside seating and it was cold. And yet we're sitting out there in our jackets at the outside seating on, on like these uh, metal picnic tables and so on. And he tells me he wants to tell me this dream. And he's, but it, it was much longer when Nabil's telling it because he's going into all these details. And all I'm thinking is, I don't know where he's going with this. He didn't tell me he's like interpreting this as like Christianity, Islam. So I'm not paying attention to what he's telling me, right? He's telling me the dream. And I'm just thinking, why the heck would I care about your dream? I do not care about your stupid dream. I'm not, I'm not your, I don't want to read your dream journal. I don't want to hear your dream. I don't care. That's what he's, he's talking about. And, and, and then he goes, so, and then he gets to the end and he starts talking about the, the, this cricket chopping the head off the thing and the boy and everything like this. And, and, and then he's like, so what do you think? And I'm like, wait, I wasn't paying attention to most of that. <laughs> <laughs> And so I had to like start asking him for clarification. So when you say the boy, what, what did you say about the, the boy? <laughs> like, Cause I wasn't paying attention. And then I find out he's like interpreting this as like the answer to a prayer where he's asking God to give him a dream and so on. And I'm like, uh Oh, I didn't pay attention to most of that. Anyway, I never, to I never told him that I wasn't paying attention. Like that's why I had to keep asking him questions about what he said. But uh, yeah. So anyway, but notice that that's like what you're saying. And in, in fact, even after he told me that he's interpreting this as he's, you know, he's part of Islam, but it's, he finds out it's actually a monster that's there to destroy him. And Christ chops the head off of the monster. Even he told, even after he told me that I was like, I'm thinking in my head, I don't care what you dream. That could be, that could be anything. Like if, if, if you told me you'd had a dream telling you to convert to Buddhism or something like that, it's like, it, I I don't take dreams all that seriously. The second one, the second one is something where there's some degree of outward confirmation because he dreamed him. He dreamed that he was in. Break that thing, AP. Break that thing. So we're really going to cause trouble for all future generations. You mentioned crickets. It's not my fault. But yeah. his second dream where he actually dreams himself in a parable, he's like, how do you interpret this dream? And I was like, that, that's a that's a parable in the Bible that you just dreamt. And he's like, you've never read that before and so on. So that's where that got my attention because now there's something that ties it to the uh, the rest of the world. But you're right. When someone, when especially someone who's studying like Christianity and uh, Islam or thinking about them has a, has a dream, it's like, ah, the dream is telling me this. It's like, I, I mean, I had, all kinds of dreams where I'm like killing zombies and stuff. I don't think it's like telling me to kill zombies, like something like that. But I, you know, cult, you know, culturally there are people who take that, take that way seriously. And no, and, and, and Nabil asked me this, uh, you know, the role of dreams in, in Christianity. And so, okay, you do have people in the Bible being guided by dreams and having vision, you know, dreams and visions telling them what to do and stuff. So I'm not gonna, I, I'm just telling you personally, if it's just a, a random dream, Whatever it's whatever it's telling you, I wouldn't take this necessarily as a as as evidence for something until there's some sort of confirmation of it. But um, yeah, that is uh, it is biblical, you know, dreams and and visions and so on, telling people what to do. So I wouldn't discount that. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I'm like you. I'm like, how how do I know that's not just in your head? That's the main thing. How do I know that's not just in your head? How do I how do I know that that's something actually from God? Anyway, that was a I wanted to share that just because I would probably never be in a situation where I would share that detail about me not paying attention when Nabil's telling me about things that got everything started. But go ahead, AP. Then you said, but, and I cut you off because I knew you're going to use some stupid sound effects. But, I don't know what you just said. I didn't pay attention at, at all uh, to what you were saying. You were uh, saying but, dreams, but, <laughs> you said, but, um, but I'm an atheist, so I don't believe in anything except incest. But, uh no no okay okay <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get you gotta get a compilation of them saying incest for uh <laughs> put that on there <laughs> Your little soundboard. Uh, so what no no what i was going to say is um there is there is no way to verify uh whether a dream actually happened or not or whether three dreams uh happened or not the the one issue that i have if you want to become ultra skeptical is um that somebody can naturally have uh, recurring dreams and actually interact with them and influence those dreams and even begin becoming, uh, you know, lucid and uh, 
aware and manipulate those dreams while you are dreaming. So it's not necessarily a very unnatural thing. I had some very wild dreams where that happened uh, after spending several days without sleeping. Um, with all of that said, there's, um, I, 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 there, there is no way why I would doubt his story. And uh, I, 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 would not, I would not come out and, and say and, and deny that, this, that all of this stuff happened to him. I cannot deny that this is probably very impactful if that happened to me. Maybe I would be, you know, very driven and very moved toward going toward that belief as, as well. So, you know, it's 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 I can com completely accept it, and I'm, I'm not going to sit here and, and think, oh, it's just a dream. <laughs> Why would you take that seriously? Just a dream, man. And who knows if it actually happened or not? No, I, go, I cannot personally go back to atheism I, where you could do anything. <laughs> I can personally not challenge that or deny anything at all. But that's, that is the issue with personal experiences, right? That that serves mostly as something to convince you. Now, if that happened to me, I'm not entirely sure if I would be if I would be convinced by that, or if I would, uh, you know, think about it and later on think, you know, what a dream might just be a dream and not mean much at all i would probably expect something something different that said not even a dream happened to me but in muslim culture uh i did have dreams when i asked for dreams um in my muslim life and i i took it seriously and i kind of acted upon those dreams you know so in in that culture it was relevant so i understand how in his culture it's also relevant there is even a prayer in islam that is specifically prayed in order to ask allah for a for a sign given in a dream um but yeah, I mean, it, it, it's just very, it's very, very conflicting. Uh, can I discredit this guy's story and his conversion because of how it happened? Absolutely not. Uh, but can it be beneficial for others or to convince others? Um, in my personal opinion, no. But again, you know, that, that, that's where I am. Quite, yeah. quite some... Here. Yeah, a uh, couple couple thoughts on on that stuff. The dreams, and uh, again, we started this off. I had no familiarity with these uh, with uh, with Kareem, and then people have filled in some details, and we've gone through his uh, through his story. And I pointed out that you know sus my suspicion levels raised a bit just from some people making up stories in the past, but that I had no particular reason. Uh, not to trust him. Some little things saying that he was told to do evangelism or something like that. Uh, you know, little, little, hey, wait a minute. Why, why would he be told that? And so on. Um, but, you know, we can understand that. He's been a Christian for a while. He might just use that term, use that term now for, uh, for the audience he's talking to. Uh, but yet, yeah, notice, even in, even in his stories about the dreams, if he were making that up, if you were making these stories up, you could do that very differently, right? You could, you know, you could say, hey, I had a dream of this thing and then it, it happened, you know, when this guy showed up and then I had another dream saying this and telling me to go to this passage and it told me to do this and so on. You could, you, there was plenty of room for embellishment there. He, he had a very, you know, a very simple story that's very similar to lots of other people. So, uh, yeah, seems seems authentic to me. I, I'm kind of like UAP in that. Notice, can, can a can a dream come can a dream come from God? Obviously, but how do we, the outsider, tell the difference between a dream that comes from God and a dream that's just just you dreaming, or you know, just a weird dream? A, a couple of a couple of things there, uh, like Nabil's second dream, where he actually dream like when he told me his dreams like that is exactly that ex that's exactly a parable out of the bible and he had never read it so there it's connected to something outside um and i've i've heard from other people where like a mis a, a missionary shows up to a town and someone comes a muslim comes up to him and said hey i just had a dr i had a dream about you i've never seen you before i just dreamed i had a dream that you came to my village and here you are you just showed up what's going on here so there, notice that's actually connected to something, uh, to something, uh, to something outside or verifiable. You can, I think, because there are so many stories like this where people in Muslim countries have some sort of vision of Jesus. I think you could; it, it can have a kind of like cumulative case, like that. Why are 
why is this so common that people are dreaming about Jesus uh, in in the Muslim world? So yeah, those, those are basically my my thoughts on all this. But yeah, I, I definitely lean towards taking this as uh, as authentic. Yeah. Um, and and Petrus here says. It seems there are more testimonies of people converting to Christianity on account of dreams, especially ex-Muslims, compared to other religions. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I don't hear. I, I heard sure that much they're... more often from. Yeah, I heard that much more often from Christians than from Muslims, for example. Yeah, and it's. I'm sure. I'm sure there. I'm sure there are dreams going in every direction and stuff. But yes, it does seem very common that when you lots of times when you hear someone, especially from a Muslim area becomes a Christian, very common to hear about dreams, uh, some sort of dream or some sort of vision. And when you hear s about someone converting to Islam, it's normally, oh, the Trinity was so confusing to me. And then I found out that the Quran has been perfectly preserved. The Quran has all these scientific miracles. So I converted to Islam without bothering to investigate anything. It's usually and then I studied, like that. but before I did that, I studied all of the religions, Studies. all of them. It took me My two weeks life. to study all the religions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, guys, that's um. Before we close out, what are your guys' uh, thoughts? Authentic or inauthentic? Wait, what? How did Vote I put it? Now. How did I put it in there? Uh, fake, real or fake? Real or fake? What are you your guys' thoughts on on everything we just went through? You should make a poll here. I think real. You should make a poll. You can oh, do a poll. I can do a poll, can't I? Hmm. Yeah, you can. I forgot I have this technology. Yeah. How does one do that? You go to your live chat you know, section and that you make poll or something like that. Live chat. Is it fiction or oh, start a fact? Poll. Fact or fiction? Depending on the outcome, we will decide if it's fact or the, fiction. The options are the options are yes or no. Can I change those? Yes, you can. Okay. Hey, do you know that show um, Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction, something like that? No, what's that? With that, that guy from that old Star Trek movie, uh, Star Trek show host, that Fraser something. Uh, that, that, that show was like, I watched it when I was a child, and it was amazing to me. Recently, I turned it on again just to be nostalgic, and I thought, this is so stupid. <laughs> All right, I put up a um, poll. And I will vote. Am I allowed to vote? No. Hey, Jonathan people vote Frakes. really quick. Jonathan Frakes, that's the guy's name. Okay. Uh, Jonathan Frakes, that's the guy from Star Trek. He, yeah, that's what I just said. He oh, he okay. hosted that show, uh, Beyond Belief, that was in, in the late nineties. Um, let's see, eighty-seven percent. Does it tell you how many people are voting? Yep. Oh yeah, one hundred sixty. All right, we'll let this run for a few seconds just to get everyone. It's funny because the percentage of people who are saying real or fake is roughly like, uh, corresponds roughly to my confidence level. Like if you're like, it, so I lean towards real, sounds real to me. So, so you can't be suspicious, but I'm thinking like, David, how confident are you? I don't know. 85, 90% sounds real or, but that's a, that's a, that's what the percentage is actually like. So that's funny. Here's the issue. Um, I vote real, but um, because I believe that everything happened, as the guy says, you know, I, I think it's quite likely out of Dota's story. So, <laughs> you know, uh, so so the vote is not necessarily about uh, the conclusions, but but just about whether the story as he described it actually happened. Yeah, it's basically, is this guy making stuff up because someone can do yeah. that? And notice, I mean, if you were a horrible, it's it's weird because notice you could be like an atheist and be like, ah, I'm going to impress these Christians by coming up with this uh, conversion story. But, you know, you could also be a Christian and think, hey, I could really impress a lot of people if I uh, if I uh, spiced up my story a little bit. I want to tell them some boring story about how I became a Christian. I could, ah, <laughs> I could come up with this awesome story. So the point the point is. There are people who would make things who would make things up, and so when when someone says, "Hey, this you know this happened," then you might want to take a take a little bit of a look at it before spreading it around. But uh, to think based on based on everything we've heard from everyone who 
based on everything we've heard from uh, people who are familiar with him and so on, who he's been in contact with, sounds legit. And if it's not, may he eventually be exposed. Uh, final polling results here. After two minutes, 268 votes, 86% say it's real. Who are we to argue with the majority? Yeah. All right. I think we're all done. Uh, AP, for anyone who came in late, why don't you tell them what we got going on tomorrow one more time real quick? Oh, yeah. Tomorrow we are going to go live on uh, on my channel with... Um, I forgot his name. With Robert Spencer. Uh, you forgot Robert, Robert Spencer's name? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forgot who I'm thinking of. Um, so Robert Spencer, David, and I will go live tomorrow on my channel where we will sit down and respond to Ali Dawa and Mohammed Hijab since they sat down recently and recorded a 15-minute video in which they explain how much they are scared of, of Robert Spencer and uh, Brother Rashid. And what a bunch of cowards, to- right? Oh, these are two, two of the biggest. These are two is the two of the. Uh, I mean, uh, Rashid is much bigger for the Arab Arab speaking world, Arabic speaking yeah. world. Um, but Robert Spencer, I mean, this guy, this guy's an, this guy's one of the original gangsters. He's one of the guys who started, uh, who started blasting away on what Islam teaches about jihad. So before, I mean, before anyone ever heard of me, they heard of uh, heard of Robert Spencer, and so. Muhammad Hijab and Ali Dawa had a chance. Sit down, Robert Spencer, and you know. In one sense, Hijab and Ali Dawa had an advantage because, like, Hijab and Ali Dawa have been working together for years. You you develop a kind of chemistry, you bounce off each other, and so on. Uh, Robert and, and Brother Rashid come from completely different worlds. Like one one deals with with uh, Arabs, and the other uh, deals with um, English speakers, and so on. And so they wouldn't have that same chemistry. So the fact that these guys just completely ran like cowards, we want nothing to do with that. We want, we want something else. That's, uh, I mean, you had, you had an, you had an opportunity to expose Robert Spencer and brother Rashid and you ran like cowards. My goodness. And not only did they basically, uh, admit that they are cowards, they also, uh, while doing this, um, accused the host patrick bed david who invited them of basically uh setting them up and you know being an islamophobic <laughs> guy who just you know sets up everything to make islam look bad like the, the guy is not even he probably doesn't have an agenda he's just there to actually you know make a program and, and host a conversation and they just 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 you know write I would just accused him of being in on this plot. It's so yeah. Funny. They made it look like this. This it's this massive plot. This guy's trying to get some people on there to have a have an interesting, popular discussion, and so it's like, oh, here's some here are the here are the super popular Dawa guys. Let's get Rashid, who's you know popular with the uh, Arab speaking Christians, and and Robert Spencer. They you know and let let's have a nice discussion that'll be popular, and then they ran. My goodness. Uh, Don here says uh, something to be weary of, especially if you believe in the supernatural, is that uh, the demonic can also influence dreams. Not to say Kareem's dream is demonically inspired, but it's something to be aware. Of. That's a but yeah, that's a side point. So if you're a naturalist and you don't believe in demons, then you're going to interpret all this as you know psychological. Um, but yes, it's it's one additional point that if someone were to have a dream saying, "Hey, do this," if you believe in a supernatural realm. You could, you could, uh, you, you, you could think that, hey, I had a dream telling me to do something, but I don't necessarily believe it was God. I believe it's something like, notice if you had a dream, if you had a dream telling you to molest a little kid or something like that, or if you had a dream saying, hey, even if the kid is 11 months old, as long as you get parental consent, you're fine. Like, like, I would not wake up and say, oh, that's a good idea to do. Let me go do that. I would be like, ah, I need to go to an exorcist to get that demon out of me. <laughs> but, I, but remember, Mohammed said uh, that that uh, the devil can can pose as anyone in, in your dreams, but not as me. So when you see me, Mohammed, then it's definitely authentic. So if you see Mohammed doing some weird messed up things in your dreams, uh, like, I don't know. Then it's it's it is definitely yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good to know. <laughs> so if I see a super pasty white dude, 
in my dream walking around with a little girl and covered in semen. I'd be like, ah, there, there's Muhammad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I should prank Robert Spencer tomorrow. And uh, I, I'm just, I just want to say this right now uh, to everyone, but not say it to him. He doesn't watch any of this anyway. But uh, <laughs> I should doesn't. introduce him. I should introduce him as Richard Spencer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's messed up. Yeah, you should do that. That'll be funny. Yeah, do that. No one tell him. None of you blabbermouths go tell uh, Robert what uh, <laughs> what AP is going to do. For those of you who don't know, there's a white nationalist named Richard Spencer. right? And people sometimes confuse him. They hear Robert Spencer and Richard Spencer and think it's talking about the same person. Uh, both their names start with R. What's the difference? So, uh, so yeah. All right, so everyone, uh, be sure to tune in tomorrow, AP's channel, where we're going to show uh, the heroes of Dawa running from an opportunity to completely expose the people that they say they want to expose. And yet, when you're you finished, you're ready, look at me. Look at me. You know you're done. Look at me. <laughs> and final, final count here, 85% say they think the story is real. Yep, I uh, leaned in that direction, and it sounds like AP does as well. Except AP is limited by his dumb worldview; he can't uh, he can't can't interpret it as anything beyond. Oh, he must have ate something weird that night. Must have had some bad hummus. Maybe he went out to the forest and had some mushrooms. And, uh... <laughs> awesome <laughs> accent. All right, we'll catch all of you tomorrow. Thanks for watching, and. Uh, uh, you could check out you could check out the video. I think I put the link in the description box if you want to watch the video without all AP's interruptions, constant interruptions and sound effects. Uh, yeah, the original the original video is there uh, in case you want to share it, in case you're interested in the video and you want to spread it around. It's there. All right, we yeah. will see all of you guys tomorrow. Land. You're sick. You're sick. That's how you finish with your sick. <laughs> All right, catch y'all later. Yeah. Oh. oh, wait, 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 wait. No, I couldn't help it. What? what? Dr. Benjamin said, uh, demons can influence you into believing in Jesus. Uh, yeah, I don't think, yeah, since I'm a Christian, I wouldn't think that demons would influence someone into believing in Jesus. The point was, if you decide that you're taking dreams as evidence. Again, I, I, there are situations where I will take dreams as some sort of evidence. It's usually when there's some sort of outside corroboration. Uh, with that said, even if there is no outside corroboration, and it doesn't mean it's not, it doesn't mean it's not from God or something like that. We're pointing out the possibilities. If someone says, I had a dream that told me to do this, could be totally natural, could be supernatural, but within that supernatural uh, category, you have, this could be something from God, or this could be from something, uh, something darker. So we're just laying out all the possibilities here so that there can be clear thinking on this issue. And now, mm -hmm. now we're checking out. Do you have a dumb sound effect you want to add for attention? So many. I was looking for the stay away from it. <laughs> you don't know what all your buttons do yet. <laughs> no, it's, it's, I have it on my, I, I, don't, I didn't really assign a button to that yet. I didn't think of that. But anyway, right. I'll do that. Okay. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. And if you don't show up, then we're going to think that you're a loser or something. Or did, yeah. Stay away from me, Slam. That's a pretty good Sajid impression.